Let's talk about something unthinkable. Could Bitcoin, the greatest financial revolution of our lifetime, actually fail? Could the one thing that was built to give us freedom from a corrupt system let us down? And if it did, what would that mean? Would it mean total victory for the corrupt central banks? Would it mean a return to a world where governments print money out of thin air? Not like we ever left that one. Or robbing you of your wealth with every single dollar that they devalue? Or worse, would it mean that everything we fought for, every ounce of financial freedom we've clawed back from these centralized parasites was all for nothing? Now listen, I know most of you are hardcore Bitcoin believers. You get it. You've been buying up every sat you can get your hands on, dodging the mainstream FUD, and watching the world wake up to the inevitable rise of sound money. But that's exactly why we need to have this conversation. Because if Bitcoin has weaknesses, and it does, we need to confront them now, before the wolves at the top of the financial food chain find a way to exploit them. So today, we're diving deep. We're talking about the real vulnerabilities in Bitcoin's foundation, the points of failure that could shake its very existence. But, and this is critical, we're also going to expose the truth about why Bitcoin is stronger than ever. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand where Bitcoin's potential weak points are, but you'll also walk away knowing why they're not enough to bring it down. So buckle up, because this discussion, it's gonna be brutal. It's gonna be real, but trust me, it is absolutely necessary. All right, folks, let's talk about one of Bitcoin's most critical vulnerabilities, centralization of miners and power. Now, for those of you who don't know, Bitcoin mining is the process that keeps the entire network running. Miners solve complex problems to validate transactions, and in return, they earn Bitcoin. Simple, right? But Bitcoin's strength lies in its decentralization. Now, what does that mean? It means no single entity, government, or corporation should ever control the network. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Right now, a few major mining pools control over 50% of the hash rate. That's the computing power securing the network. And let me tell you, that is terrifying. Because if any single group gets more than 50%, they could pull off what's called a 51% attack. They could rewrite the blockchain double spend coins, or worse, completely destroy trust in Bitcoin. And we're seeing more and more geographic concentration, especially in countries like the US and China. You know what that means, right? One policy change, one geopolitical conflict, one natural disaster could cripple huge chunks of the network. Take a good look at this image. This right here is a massive Bitcoin mining farm. And sure, it might look impressive, but do you know what else it looks like? A point of failure. Here's the thing, while centralized mining hubs like this can be vulnerable to physical risks, floods, fires, or even attacks, they're not the be all end all of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was never meant to rely on just a few mining farms, and it doesn't. In fact, the Bitcoin community has already proven it knows how to adapt. Do you remember when China banned mining in 2021? Overnight, a huge chunk of network went offline. And yet, within months, miners relocated and the hash rate came roaring back. Bitcoin didn't just survive, it came out stronger. Yes, a site like this could face regulatory pressures or even geopolitical challenges. Governments love to talk about Bitcoin's energy use, but let's not forget, miners are already decentralizing. They're spreading out into smaller setups, exploring renewable energy sources and making Bitcoin's network more resilient than before. Bitcoin isn't at the mercy of these massive facilities. It's powered by innovation, by thousands of independent miners, and by a global community that refuses to let it fail. So while this image is a reminder that centralization is something to watch out for, it's also a reminder of how far we've come. Bitcoin's strength lies in its ability to adapt and overcome. The network doesn't just depend on one farm, one country, or one group. It depends on all of us. And folks, we've proven time and time again when Bitcoin is tested, it doesn't crumble, it evolves. This isn't a story of vulnerability, it's a story of resilience. And that's why Bitcoin will keep moving forward. Next up, 
hard forks. And if you were around for the Bitcoin cash split in 2017, you know exactly where this is going. A hard fork happens when there's a disagreement so intense in the Bitcoin community that part of it just breaks off. A faction creates a new blockchain with different rules and while competition can be healthy, forks can also be catastrophic. Remember Bitcoin cash? They promised faster transactions, lower fees and independence from Bitcoin's bloat. But what really happened? Confusion, infighting, and ultimately a watered down version of the original Bitcoin. Now let's take the idea of hard forks one step further because here's a nightmare scenario that nobody talks about enough. What if a government tried to force a hard fork by gaining control of mining? Let's say a government or worse, a coalition of governments decides Bitcoin is a threat to their monopoly on money. What would they do? Well, they'd attack from within. Imagine this. They start throwing money at mining operations, building out massive facilities, and consolidating cash power. Slowly but surely, they'd inch closer to a majority. With enough control, they could push changes to the network. Maybe they would weaken privacy protections. Maybe they'd alter the supply cap, turning Bitcoin into just another inflationary joke, like the fiat currencies we're all trying to escape from. Or maybe they'd propose regulatory friendly rules under the guise of safety, dividing the community and forcing a hard fork. We've seen forks before. Again, remember Bitcoin Cash? And while Bitcoin always emerges stronger, a government force fork would be an entirely different beast. It would shake market confidence, confuse users, and potentially split the community at a time when unity is critical. But here's the thing. Governments can't win this battle. Why? Because Bitcoin's decentralized nature is its greatest strength. Even if one government tried to control the mining power, the community would push back. Miners would relocate. Developers would update the protocol to counter the attack. Users would support the real Bitcoin, the one that stays true to its principles. And let's not forget, this isn't just about code, it's about belief. Governments can't buy, seize, or coerce the kind of global grassroots commitment that Bitcoin inspires. We've seen miners leave entire countries to protect the network. We've seen developers step up to defend its integrity and every time Bitcoin survives. So yes, the rise of a government trying to force a hard fork is real, but the solution is already built into the network. Decentralization, resilience, a community that refuses to compromise. Bitcoin has faced threats before and every time it comes out stronger. At the end of the day, Bitcoin isn't just a network, it's a revolution. And revolutions don't bend to the will of governments, they outlast them. And finally, let's address the elephant in the room. Institutional investors. MicroStrategy, Tesla, hedge funds, they're all scooping up Bitcoin like it's a Black Friday sale. On one hand, sure, it's validation for Bitcoin as a legitimate asset, but let's not ignore the risks here. When a few institutions hold massive amounts of Bitcoin, they gain an outsized influence on the market. MicroStrategy alone holds over 450,000 Bitcoin. You really think that's healthy for a decentralized network? No way. If they ever dump their holdings or worse, use them to manipulate the market, it could wreak havoc. But here's the bigger picture. Institutions can't kill Bitcoin. The beauty of decentralization is that it's built to resist concentration. Even if the big players stumble, Bitcoin's open source code and global community ensure it will endure. The risks are real. Centralization, forks, infrastructure weaknesses, institutional manipulation. These are the challenges that we're up against. But here's the takeaway. Bitcoin's strength isn't just in its code, it's in us, the people, the believers, the builders. The Bitcoin community is its biggest strength and we have to stick together. All right, let's entertain the worst case scenario for a second. What if Bitcoin actually failed? What if for some insane reason, the most resilient, decentralized, untouchable financial network we ever seen just collapsed? First off, markets would go absolutely nuclear and not in a good way. We're talking billions wiped out overnight. Crypto exchanges, frozen. Investors, 
freaking out. Governments, oh, they'd be celebrating. Finally free from the one thing they couldn't manipulate. And now let's not forget the institutions, companies like Tesla, hedge funds, even governments that now hold Bitcoin on their balance sheets. They'd be in free fall, scrambling to salvage whatever is left. Retail investors, people like you and me, would be left with three choices. Panic and dump everything, look for the next best alternative, or double down just in case things eventually recover. If you've been in this space long enough, you know that when fear kicks in, the weak hands run and the true believers, they build. And here's where things get really messy. Bitcoin isn't just some niche asset anymore. It's embedded in entire economies. Think about El Salvador, a whole nation bet on Bitcoin. If it collapsed, their economy would take a massive hit. Keep in mind, Bitcoin adoption wasn't just about price. It was about freedom from the IMF, from central banks, from the broken system that kept countries like El Salvador in poverty for decades. Mining companies gone, service providers bankrupt, but the innovation, the ideas that Bitcoin ignited, that's not going anywhere. Because let's be honest, Bitcoin didn't start as some corporate backed investment vehicle. It started as a revolution, a way to take power away from the corrupt suits who have controlled money for far too long and movements don't die, they evolve. That brings us to the final and most important point. Even if Bitcoin failed, crypto wouldn't. Think about it. Would the internet disappear if Google collapsed tomorrow? Would digital payments vanish if Visa shut down? No. The tech behind Bitcoin, decentralization, censorship resistance, permissionless finance doesn't just vanish. If Bitcoin somehow collapsed, the next day, devs would be forking the code, launching new networks, and improving where Bitcoin might have fallen short. So maybe Ethereum or Solana would step up. Maybe a new chain would emerge, one that keeps Bitcoin's principles alive, but makes it even better. Maybe we would get mass adoption for Litecoin or Monero. We've seen this before, hard forks, network splits, rebuilding after crashes, and every single time, the movement only gets stronger. Because Bitcoin was never about just making money. It's about breaking the system that's enslaved people for centuries. It's about freedom from a financial world designed to keep you poor while the elite get richer. And you think that idea is just gonna die? Not a chance. The people who built Bitcoin, the people who believe in it, they're not going anywhere and we're not going anywhere. So yeah, let's acknowledge the risks. Let's be smart. Let's be prepared, but let's also remember Bitcoin isn't just some stock, some asset, some investment. It's the foundation of an entirely new way of thinking about money, about power and about freedom. And that will never fail. So let's talk about why, despite everything, Bitcoin is built to last. Let's dive into one of Bitcoin's greatest strengths. It's open source nature. Think about this, Bitcoin isn't owned by a corporation or a government or some shadowy figure pulling the strings. It's owned by everyone and no one. The code is open source, meaning anyone anywhere can review it, improve it, or suggest changes. That transparency is what makes Bitcoin bulletproof. The network evolves because of a global decentralized army of developers who work tirelessly to make it stronger. They're not here for a paycheck from Wall Street or a pat on the back from the government. No, they're here because they believe in the mission, freedom, decentralization, and empowerment. And let's not forget, when Bitcoin faces challenges, it adapts. We've seen it time and time again. Segwit, Taproot, these upgrades didn't come from some corporate boardroom. They came from a community of brilliant minds working together. That's the power of open source. That's why Bitcoin can weather any storm. Now let's zoom out a bit. Bitcoin may have been the first, but it inspired something much bigger, an entire ecosystem of innovation. Ethereum, DeFi, layer two solutions. These projects are all building on the foundation that Bitcoin created. Even if Bitcoin were to stumble, and let's be real, it won't, but this movement itself is still unstoppable. There are thousands of projects out there proving that decentralization works. Look at DeFi, look at NFTs, look at entire nations adopting blockchain technology to replace failing systems. 
Bitcoin lit the spark, but now the fire has spread worldwide and nobody's putting this one out. The best part, these projects will reinforce each other. They're like branches of the same tree. So even if one branch breaks, the tree still stands tall. This isn't just a tech revolution. It's a paradigm shift that the powers that be cannot control. Again, let's not forget what makes Bitcoin and crypto truly unstoppable. You and I, us. The developers, the advocates, the believers. This isn't just a financial movement, it's a philosophical one too. It's about taking power from corrupt institutions and putting it back into the hands of the people. Bitcoin isn't just code, it's hope. It's a lifeline for millions of people worldwide who are tired of being robbed by governments, exploited by banks, and ignored by the system. As long as there's passion, people like you, me, and the global community fighting for decentralization, Bitcoin and crypto will never die. So here's the bottom line. Yes, Bitcoin has vulnerabilities, centralized mining, the risks of hard forks, infrastructure weaknesses, even the looming shadow of institutional influence. These are real challenges and we'd be naive to ignore them. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think the biggest challenge to Bitcoin is right now? If you found this video to be informative or enlightening, I really encourage you to check out learningcrypto.com. You'll get exposure to our state of mind and our experience in crypto, and I think it'll be a great benefit to you. So again, check out learningcrypto.com. Thank you so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe. See you later.